Hi, Sean. Hi, everyone. Now, Sean, we said we would finish Nicopolis on Monday the 10th. So right now it's Friday afternoon and I've decided to start making a video and vlog my way through the second half of Nicopolis simply because I don't think I can get to the end of this book and have some coherent ideas. I kind of need to talk as I go with this book because it's very challenging for me. So I'm gonna, yeah, just do a vlog over this weekend of me finishing off the second half and then end with my thoughts. And hopefully that will be a better process to be able to get things out rather than trying to compile them at the end. That's what I'm thinking. So yeah, I have a little bit of time. I have the whole house to myself right now. I am on book three, just about to start that. So maybe I can get a chunk of it read now while there is no one to interrupt me. And I'll just talk to you along the way. Bye. Hi, Sean. I'm just in the, I think at the end of chapter, oh, end of chapter six in book three. And we've come across Rumi and it's, the, the story about how he treated the prostitute and then went home to his wife just horrified me and was just really horrible and it's made me think about all the men that we've been introduced to in this book and how horrible they all are. I mean the nicest one to come out of them all is Mr Lee but he introduced Dimple to Opium so I mean that's a big black mark against his name as far as I'm concerned. But the way that the men interact with the women is really, really rough. And I know we're in the drug stage and I know we're in the prostitution and stuff and all of that. I get it. But there is not any kindness shown between a man and a woman. Rashid has taken Dimple in and is giving her things, but still he's just doing that because he wants her to be like an actress. He's even named her after the actress. I just... There is no, if the author is trying to point out how bad the conditions are for women in this world and how far below the men they are, how they have no choices, then he's doing a very good job because I am really horrified by that. I'm really horrified by how the men treat the women in this book. It's really affecting me. On a brighter note, I am enjoying reading it more. I feel like the book and I have come to a place of understanding. I may have lowered my expectations in a way, but I'm just understanding that this is just about, as this is a scene setting book, it's not plot driven. And so I'm stuck, you know, what I've read so far tonight, I've enjoyed reading a lot more than I did the first half. So that's a good thing. But anyway, I just wanted to jump on and say, men are shit in this book basically <laughs> okay i'm gonna keep reading by my fire bye hi sean well today has gone just as i expected it would i haven't wanted to pick up narcopolis at all <laughs> i'm actually dreading picking it up that's really where i'm at which is sad to say and horrible to say but that's really what it's about I think this book highlights very clearly that I'm not a character driven person. I need a plot. I also don't like reading books about drug addicts. <laughs> there we go. It's just too all over the shop for me. That's what I'm dreading about it. Anyway, I, I, I want to finish it now because we're filming this video. <laughs> That's the only reason that I'm going to finish this book. Otherwise, I would have bailed a long time ago. But I think it will be nice to have complete thoughts. But I'm not thinking they're going to be very positive. Anyway, I'm going to settle in for the afternoon session and get book three read. Yes, I am. <laughs> so we're looking at nearly three hours later. And I've read two pages. I have done everything I can to avoid this book. 
to be fair, I have children, but there's been a lot of YouTube watching and no reading. Oh, I'm going to do it now. This is why I can't do this book. In the matter of three pages, a man who I can only barely remember was kind of introduced not long ago, but some gangster dude. He was being raped by his boss, so he cut off his boss's penis while he was being raped and then beat him to death, and then dragged his body out of the alley and then four months later got arrested for a robbery and then, while being interrogated for the robbery, admitted to the murder and then killed himself. And then in the next paragraph, Dimple, our main character, got interrogated by, was on a random street and got interrogated by some people and then helped her boss's son get free from those random people. I was in the space of three pages. I mean, I just, it's all too much. There is no, nothing's complete. It's either really fast no it is it, it it only has one pace and that is kind of picking characters and just running with them like the Salem guy you don't form a connection to them and they're just kind of indispensable you tell their story they die maybe that's the point maybe that's how this life is I don't know but it doesn't make for a very interesting story for me. That's just all too much. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's just my head is spinning the whole time and I have I don't care. I don't care and I should. These are people in need. These are people in really horrible situations and I'm just not being allowed to connect to them in any way because there's no... There's no complete story ever. Ever. Even Dimple's story is just in the background and she's like the main character, I guess. Anyway, I'm just going to keep reading. I just feel like this is the best way for me to try and articulate this. Ah. It's fine. 30 on Sunday morning and I can't sleep and it's been a shit night let me tell you <laughs> but I promised myself as I'm waking up that I'm not going to do anything until I finish and I can't believe it. yep I'm going to finish it <sighs> we haven't started out well we've now digressed into a side character called Rumi, who is the most despicable human being that I've ever read about. And about his time in LA. He's talking to a pimp. I don't care. I don't want to know about this man. I don't want to know about what other horrible things he did in LA. These side stories are driving me nuts. I think I'm, oh, yeah, I'm skimming it. It's all about what he did with a woman. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to totally skip this part. I don't want to read crap like that. Right, so I finished book three. That ending bit was just reinforcing my idea that this book is just focusing on the male characters and maybe that's the whole point maybe that's the point that the under this Bombay world is all about the males and the women's of the victims but it's disgusting I mean there's a point here where Dimple who I'm invested in and want to make sure she's okay she goes into rehab and so does this guy Rumi keeps popping up in book three the guy who went to LA that I just anyway this guy's horrible
horrible. And the whole part of that chapter was about his process and his relapses and coming back to his rehab. Tortures a girl. I, I mean... And then the author introduces Rumi's mentor at the rehab to try and philosophise about why people take drugs. There was a couple of interesting ideas. Dimple gave her point of view of why she takes drugs. Rumi gave his point of view of why he takes drugs. And it's really about, you know, blocking out the past and um, being bored. But then this philosopher head of the Rumi's rehab do talks about the freedom of taking drugs and how especially with heroin that you know what it does you know how addictive it is you know how sick it can make you you know how you can die yet you still make the choice to do it and it's about that freedom of having choice and so you kind of exercise that freedom to the nth degree I had never thought about that before. So there you go. There was a little tiny couple of sentences there that made me go, hmm. But the rest was horrible. <laughs> the rest was just horrible. I cannot understand why we are following these horrible men more than we are following Dimple, who is clearly a victim here. So there's book four, which is only, I don't know, let's have a look, please say 10 pages, <laughs> which is only 30 pages. So I'm going to stick true to my word and finish this off. But those are my thoughts at the end of book three. Well, there you go. All done. <sighs> Nothing has changed. <laughs> One thing that I love about buddy reading is that you get to talk through things that maybe open doors. So I, unlike Sean, sorry buddy, I got to hang out with Joe Smith on Voxer for this. And I'm kind of glad that I was the one that got to do it because I was the one that struggled with this the most. From the sounds of it, Sean, you are loving it, but... Um, jo and I just were chatting and she gave me her views at the end of book three and book four starts with a lot of sort of religious political talk and that's been there the whole way through but it sort of ramped up and Jo and I did some research and found out <laughs> things we didn't know about Bombay including the fact that the end of the book is around the time of well, maybe even further in, is around the time of riots between the Hindus and the Muslims in Bombay. And that kind of put into perspective a few things. Um, I think that there's this theme that runs through this book about living a drug addiction and also the craziness of real world. So the craziness of living with a drug addiction um, and all of the characters that you're faced with and the life that you have to live. But also there's these reminders of the craziness of um, the real world and Mother Nature. There's this talk about floodings and things like that, so the craziness of, you know, Mother Nature. Um, and then also this Hindu-Muslim tension. Um so I can see those themes running through. I just found it so hard to read. And maybe the, the type of content skewed all of my opinions. And I just said to Joe that I'm reading this very emotionally. I'm, I'm, when Joe checks in, she has kind of understandings about the, the different things that happen through the chapter and how they link through. Whereas I'm just emotionally charged reading this book. Like, the, I, I can't believe how emotionally charged. So that's not to say that I don't want to speak for you, Joe. If you watch this, you know, of, of course it's hitting emotional notes for Joe. But when she checks in with me, I'm like, yeah, okay. So she's kind of got a more, more understanding there. Whereas I'm just like in fight or flight mode. I, I can't get past 
the women, like the, the violence and the horrific interactions with women, every interaction is negative. Dimple had one kind of, oh, maybe two positive relationships with men, but they were positive to a point that, like, I just totally wouldn't tolerate that. But, you know, it was just too much. The sideline stories about characters, like, uh, they set the scene and I get that. And we talked, you know, a lot about Indian culture which I appreciated, but I, I, I didn't need to know. I would have much preferred a story about Dimple and that was it. And I think that could have demonstrated a lot that the author was trying to achieve in this. It's, to me, it was just all over the place, confusing and really super duper confronting. So that's kind of it for me. I dragged myself through it. I, I'm not even glad I read it, but I am glad that I had the experience of reading it with you, Sean, and with you, Joe, because it kind of showed me how this content, how emotionally affected I am by this content. Like it made it very apparent. Whew. I I need to to be calm this has brought a frenzy into my world like you wouldn't believe I want it out of my house that's what that's how negative emotionally I am towards this book I don't think I could look at it with any kind of pleasure ever again it's too much for me <gasps> so I'm gonna wrap this up I'm glad that I did this vlog style because there are some thoughts there along the way that I've just I've completely forgotten about a lot of things I've pushed them away so I knew that was going to happen but anyway I think that what is wonderful is that we all have different ways of relating to books and different ways that books affect us and I'm really excited to hear your thoughts Sean I'm lucky that I heard Joe's thoughts um yeah, but this book to me, without the Indian culture references, I think this is a one star, but I'm going to give it a two. But that's it. It just was too full on. Okay, if you ever pick this up, good luck. <laughs> and to Sean and Joe, thank you for putting up with my rawness. <laughs> Bye, everyone.